Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and this is my review and setup tutorial for the Canova Smart Head. It's a really awesome device that lets you add some panning and tilting to your videos and time lapses. And it integrates with Canova's Smart Motion Head and Slider to really give you an awesome all around motion control time lapse setup. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up on a tripod for basic panning and tilting. And then I'm gonna show you how to set it up on a slider rig also. So you can use it and get pans and tilts while it's sliding, which should add a lot to your time-lapse videos. So let's go in closer. So this is the smart head. And when it first came out of the box, I was a little confused because I didn't understand how this was all connected and how it should be set up. But reading the instruction manual definitely helps and also taking little visual cues like, oh, the logo is upside down. Hmm, this probably should be flipped over. But that doesn't look quite right either. So what I've found that's easiest to do is flip it around so you can see these two levers like this. And then you twist this lever here just like halfway and this detaches. So we can put this to the side. Now this is much like a Manfrotto sliding tripod plate, it just slides. So you loosen this and you give it a good pull. Mine was a little sticky and took a little bit to remove. And then this plate actually separates. So it's two distinct pieces. And you can see why it's difficult to move because it actually has these rubberized pads here to hold it in place, which is nice to have, but if you're trying to remove it, it can be definitely a pain. So, once you get that undone, then you're ready to mount it. Three other items should have come with your smart head. One of them is a little attachment data cable. Another one is a longer ethernet cable. And the last is a little red screw. Next, you're going to want to mount your pan motor to your tilt motor. Now, the thing to keep in mind whenever you're mounting this is that it has to be connected via this little data cable. So the best way to do that is to look over here and see how it has this little tilt block plug. And on the bottom here, it has a tilt block plug. So whenever you mount it, make sure that this side, it matches up with this side. So mount it with both of these on the same side. And this just slides right into here, much like a Manfrotto tripod plate would. Pretty cool. So slides into place there. Let's rotate this around here, lock this into place. Make sure that it's not angled up or anything like that where it might mess with the pan and tilt. Then we're gonna take this little guy that was holding the pan motor and you're going to slide him down into here. About that far, it really doesn't matter. Lock this into place and make sure that whenever you do that, that the locking little tightening arm here is not in this angle. It's not at any angle toward the tilt motor because what you'll end up happening, and I can show you whenever I loosen this piece here, is that if you are tilting, it's angling up, it's gonna hit. So to avoid that, keep it at always at a vertical angle, either here or here or here, basically just any place that's not on this side. So now look, it can rotate freely, how cool. Okay, so make sure that's locked back down. Now it's time to attach the data cable that connects the pan motor to the tilt motor. So flip it over on its side, and we're gonna plug one end directly into here, like so, and the other end directly into here. If I can get it. Oh, I had it upside down. So those two go together and you have this little cord just hanging there, but that's okay. So make sure you don't pull on it or anything like that. Just another thing to keep in mind. You're gonna need a way to mount your camera to this plate. They include this, but if you really, I would recommend, and what I'm planning on doing in the future is actually getting a, another quick release plate and actually mounting that onto it so that it, this product will work with all of my other um, so camera support gear. But since we don't have that, I'm gonna show you how to mount this. So let's get this in focus a little bit better. There we go. 
Um, I'm going to tilt this up a little bit so you can see it whenever I do it. It has all these, it has these three grooves here, you see. And this little screw attachment here actually, if you put it right at the end and start to twist it, you'll notice that the ends here are slightly wider and they're made to let it rotate up in. But see, now it's stuck in there. So you can slide it around. Whoa. And there you go. So let's mount this on a tripod. Then we'll connect the rest of the equipment and we'll go from there. We're now gonna mount the smart head to the tripod. As you can see on the bottom of the smart head, it has different tripod mounts for either, is it 3 eighths of an inch? I don't remember. It has different tripod mounts for different sizes. We're gonna take a Manfrotto quick release plate here and screw it in. I would definitely recommend tightening this on with a screwdriver of some sort. Once you've done that, you're ready to mount it. So I have the quick release plate facing this way. So we'll just slide it onto the tripod, lock it into place, and I will rotate all of this this way so you can actually see it in all of its glory. Now this looks pretty cool on here. I gotta say, like I feel like it's some sort of robotic monster and it's kinda neat. Let's plug in the smart motion controller to this and mount a camera on top of it and get it working. Now we're gonna mount the 7D to the smart head. First thing to keep in mind when you're using this is that you need to mount the 7D facing the proper direction so that the smart head understands oh, I need to tilt up versus it'll try to tilt down, it'll be confused. So the front of it is actually this way around. Let's loosen this here. I was gonna try to be smooth about it, but it didn't happen. So rotate all the way around. This, now the front of it, now it is facing you. So much like mounting to any other tripod that you've ever mounted anything to in your life, hopefully, this is the same exact way. Screw in your camera, and it is now mounted. The nice thing about this is that you can then adjust it if you need to. So you can loosen this a little bit and like slide it closer or farther away. You can slide it way out here if you need to get to the memory cards, which is really helpful. So I'm gonna screw that in right there, and that looks pretty darn awesome, I gotta say. I'm gonna assume that you've watched my previous smart motion controller video. I'll link to it in the description below. You can watch that video and in it I show how to set up the smart motion controller, how to get everything plugged in, how to use it, and I review it as well. So watch that video first. I'm gonna assume that you've seen it. I'm gonna skip a little bit of that setup so that we can skip right to showing you how to use the smart head with the smart motion controller. First off, you got your box. If you watched my previous video, you saw this. That's how I keep all my stuff organized for time lapsing. This thing's great. I'll put another link to it down below. So the only real new piece of equipment that you have to use with your smart motion head is the Ethernet cable, which I'm sure this would probably work with any other cable. It's just a basic Cat5 patch cable. So you can literally go to any computer store and buy a shorter one or a longer one, depending on what you wanted. So if you want everything a ways away, you can totally make that happen. You're only gonna have two things actually running into the smart head. The f and I'm gonna flip this around so you can actually see it. One of them is the camera cord. The other one is the controller ethernet cable. So we will plug in the camera cord first. It's pretty straightforward. Plug the little camera plug into there. Now we will plug in the ethernet cable, which is also incredibly straightforward, which is nice. So if you've ever used a computer, you have a basic understanding how to do this. Good job. Controller goes into there. Plug this into your other controller port here. So the cool thing is that the data cable handles both the instructions from the controller itself and it tells the camera how many times to take pictures. So it's all one cord instead of you having to run like the camera cord and the other connection cord. I'm gonna give you a little example here and then I'm gonna go straight into actually showing you the settings on the controller. So if we go to pan and tilt move, control here, left and right is, rotates it like this 
and up and down actually rotates the camera. Pretty sweet. So, as you can see here, the camera is actually rotating. The cool thing is that you can also incorporate diagonal angles. You could be panning it down while rotating. So let's show you how to use the smart head with the motion controller. Here we have the Canova smart motion controller. If you watched my previous review, you've already seen this, so I'm just gonna go back into it and show you the pan and tilt functions. First off, we need to power it on by holding down the power slash enter key. And it goes into one menu, but we'll go out. Okay, so here's your basic menus. You have your time lapse, live motion, and your settings. First off, we'll go to the settings menu. We'll work our way up. Pan and tilt direction. So what you can actually do is you can set your pan and tilt either normal or reverse, depending on which way your camera is facing. So if you really have to have your camera facing the other way because of space or something like that, you can go into the settings and set it to reverse and it will do everything backwards, which is very helpful. Live motion is great. So you notice you have slide move, pan and tilt move, pan and tilt plus slide and auto move. We're gonna first off, you've already seen slide move so when, if, whenever you just use the slider. So we're gonna go down to pan and tilt move. You have your pan speed, you have your tilt speed, and then RF, I'm assuming it stands for something like rate fall off or something like that. Um, I can give you an example of how it works, but basically you set your pan speed to whatever you want. I just have pan and tilt set to 100, so this is if you need to rotate it into position and get it all set. And then you can hit start. The pan and tilt RF is almost a slowdown effect. So whenever you let off of the joystick, instead of it just quickly like panning and stopping, it'll pan and then it'll slow down a little bit before it stops. So it's helpful if you're doing live video and you are actually using it for panning and tilting and you want it to slowly come to a rest instead of just stopping. It'll gently um, accelerate and gently slow down. Next, you have your pan and tilt plus slide. This is my understanding of it here. SS is slider speed, so you can set your slider speed how fast you want the, the uh, slider to um, move. Then you have your RF, which is how much you want it to slow down. Like I said before, it's it's if you want it to stop, then you want it to stop quickly, or you want it to slowly stop. You have your pan speed, which mine is at 100%, and my tilt speed, which is at 100%. So you hit, hit enter, and then you can control it left or right. And last year, and this is the one I'm sure y'all are all interested in, is time lapse. So going here, we have interval move, which is has part of the settings we're gonna use, camera settings. We're actually going to use all of the different menu portions here. Starting down at the bottom though, we have the tilt motor settings. So we're going to that. Um, initial direction, up. So you can tell it to pan up. Pretty straightforward. Um, cut angle is the amount, the cut, they use cut for photos. So how many, um, how much of an angle you want it to move per photo. And I'm pretty sure this is by degrees, so you have it set, I have it currently set to move at 0.2 degrees. And you can set it from 0.2 up to one degree per photo. So if I'm like, I want this thing to move 0.2 degrees per photo taken, I set it for that. Then you also have your total cut, which is total photos. So I want it to remember that we're in the tilt settings. So for whenever it's tilting up, I want it to take 25 photos, tilting up. Delay, now this is where things get a little complicated, but I swear once you get it, it'll click and you'll be like, oh, this is actually incredibly informative and easy to use. Delay is how many photos you want it to take before it starts tilting. So let's go out really quick. To give you a better understanding of it, we'll go to pan settings really quick. Look, it looks the exact same, except now it's the initial direction is right so we want it to pan right. Um, and I currently have the degrees angles at 0.8 degrees per photo. Total cut is 20 and delay cut is 20. So what this means is that I want it to take 20 photos total 
while panning to the right, but I want it to wait for 20 photos. So what I'm essentially telling it to do, because I've told it to delay for 20, and because I have the tilt motor set for delay zero and total 25, it is going to take 25 photos panning up, and it will start immediately as soon as I hit start. Once it has taken 20 of these 25 photos, then the pan motor is going to kick in and it will start taking another 20 photos. But it's go these are going to be um, with it panning to the right. So say that I'm following something like the Milky Way. So I want it to pan up and then after 20 photos, which is not feasible at all to follow the Milky Way, but just for an example, that might be better for the moon. But so it's going to literally pan up, it's going to literally tilt up for 25. Then once it hits 20 photos, it is going to start panning to the right as well. So say you're following something that's going up and it's going to the right. You're telling it to do that. So it's actually going to take 45 photos total. Some of them are going to be um, with... Uh, with it tilting up, some of them are going to be with it panning. So I hope that explains it. Play around with it and you should be able to get it. it. It's really not that complicated, but it does let you set it up and be able to preset really, really cool movement effects with it. Um, next is camera settings, which is pretty darn standard. Um, we already covered this before in all your focus time. If you're using a manual focus lens, you don't have to worry about that. Just leave it at zero. Exposure time, because honestly, if you're doing a time lapse, you shouldn't even be focusing. It should be manually focused, anyways. Um, exposure time, the f the fastest you can set it to is one thirtieth of a second, but you can, or the, I guess this, yeah, that that would be the fastest shutter speed. But you can slow it down, way, way, way down, and so you can have it at oh man, tons of seconds, um, tons of time waiting. But we'll just leave it at one thirtieth because this is daytime, so great. Um, shot wait. How long to wait between taking photos? Say that you need it to be able to write to your memory card and you want to set that as a global setting. Um, that's where you would set that. But I'm not going to mess with that. Interval move. Interval movements left, right? You've seen this for the slider. But because right now, um, but depending on if you have it on a tripod or if you're using it on the slider, regardless, um, you can set it, your left movement or right movement here on the slider, and you can tell it how many millimeters you want it to move. Um, if you're doing it on a tripod, you can just leave it at one and it won't try to do anything, it'll just ignore it. But if you're using it on a, on a slider, then you need to make sure that you have this set properly. Total frames. This is a different frame number from it going into like the pan motor settings with total cut and delay cut. Um, frames are also cuts, I guess. It's just, you see it also cut. I don't know why, I guess it's just shorter for them to say it that way. But regardless, um, this is separate. So this is your total amount. So you need to have this, I just have it 942 because it's a very high number and I'm going to come and stop it beforehand before it reaches that number. But it's nice if you want to set up a time lapse and you don't really want to have a set amount of time, like you have to go do something and come back later and you just want it to run until you get back. Set it to a high number, don't worry about it. Um, but like I said, it is different from your total cuts and delay cuts. So make sure that these numbers are always smaller than your total frames or else you're, it's, that'll, that will stop your time lapse before it reaches the end of the total cuts and the delay cuts. So or photos. I really need to figure out how I'm going to phrase that. Oh well. So, interval time is mine set to two seconds, so it has enough time to write to the memory card. And I want it to say, like, be able to take photos of clouds. I would have it at two seconds. And then the last thing is you just hit start. And then it will start telling you your time. And so it'll give you a little countdown. IV is interval time, I guess. Um, ST, it'll tell you if it's moving or waiting, and if it'll tell you if it's moving the motor or it's waiting. So it'll move, wait pretty quickly. Uh, it tells me that it's captured 10 frames, 
total frame out of 942. Capture time, it's gone for 26 seconds so far. And then it's telling me that it has captured 17 tilt capture photos and zero pan capture photos. But watch this here. Once it hits 20, see, it starts capturing the pan capture photos because that's how we had it set. So that's going to run its course to about 25 and then it'll be done. So we'll just cancel that now, back out. And that's basically it. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to show it to you guys on the slider as well so you kind of get a good rounded, rounded look at how it all works. I have my slider rig here now and we are going to mount the smart motion controller directly onto it. So as you can see on the bottom, it has three really big screw holes. So I'll pick the middle one here and you just put it on and rotate it on. It's a little easier to do if you don't have a camera on it as well, but I left mine on and we're already committed at this point. So yes, but this should screw all the way in until it fits snugly. Let's plug in our motor onto the slider and go from there. Now that I have everything connected, if we wanted to do a slider move, we could do something like that and it'll go back and forth so you can get into position. And we can also go to the pan and tilt settings here and rotate. Once you understand the basics of it, you're able to do some really cool stuff with it. So I'm still learning this gear, but I have high hopes for it in the future. I am planning on just being a time-lapse fanatic and doing this all the time. I think this is a great addition to Canova's products and all. This product is great. I love using it and it integrates well with all the other Canova products that I have, which is really awesome. And I can see myself definitely making some amazing time lapses in the future. So thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment on whoismat.com and let me know what else you would like to see reviewed or if you have any questions. Thanks. Have a good day.